Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here, and today we're looking at the first issue of Star Trek The Next Generation 1 from the sixth is issue miniseries from 1988. Okay, so I loved, like, like, this is probably my Star Trek. Like, uh, I was too young for the first round, and my brother got me into The Next Generation, and I... I've always loved that one best, and it's, like, the one I watched probably most consistently. I'm not a huge Trekkie, but um, my love of the show definitely made me pick up this book. Probably only the first issue. I don't remember if I followed it. Well, it was a six-issue miniseries, so damn me for not continuing if I didn't. But anyway, of course, I had to get this because of this gorgeous Bill Sienkiewicz cover to begin with. I mean, how epic is that? I mean, this is a perfect example of why Bill Sienkiewicz is such an amazing artist. And I just really love this image. Not super into Star Trek in and of itself, so less into the comic books. But I did have to get this first issue. And it's fun. I think my main problem with it is that, like... Uh, you know, obviously with the cool special effects and things of watching that, when you have something to compare it to, um, it's probably less impactful. Now, if Bill Sienkiewicz were like painting the whole thing, that would be like so dope and so cool, whatever. So Mike Carlin, writer, uh, Pablo Marcos, penciler. I mo mainly know him as an inker, so it's kind of cool to see him penciling here. Carlos Garzon and Arn Eastar, inkers. Bob Pinaha, letterer, and Carl Gafford, colorist. I just did something, another book, with um, him uh, coloring. Interesting, I can't remember what it was right this second. But um, great double page spread here. Pablo Marcos and Arnie Starr and signed it. And Carlos Garzon. So that's always weird when uh, inkers sort of work in tandem with each other, but I can see why, especially with a highly detailed book like this, especially back in the day. I'd love to see the original art like this because uh, I'm sure it's completely gorgeous and just like so many little details in here. And that's probably why two anchors are working together. I mean, you can do like, it just takes such skill to get like these fine little like feathering lines and stuff. I just love the way, you know, um, traditional pencils, and inks, you know, drew space and outer space and like stars in the sky and planets and the cosmos and all that it was always so fun to see different artists, different takes on it because, you know, nowadays the colorist can pretty much just drop in or add a bunch of stars, you know, lickety split. And a lot of this would just be left blank. I love this two page spread. Oh my God. So cool. I love Star Trek, the next generation to see all the fun characters. And I have to say, this is pretty ambitious penciling for Pablo Marcos. Um, you know, it's like something based on a popular TV show, you're gonna wanna have the likenesses be good. And he definitely nailed these likenesses. I think they look great. Although I love how buff he made uh, freaking Picard here. Not to say that Picard didn't have a nice physique for you know, a man his age, but uh, maybe he was that muscular. I don't know. I felt like Riker wasn't that muscular. Certainly not as the series progressed. Oh, it's so funny. Um, any Trekkies who are watching are going to know this, but um, there's, <laughs> I guess there's a phenomena about Star Trek that the show got better after Riker had his beard or worse. And which is like the equivalent to jumping the shark with Happy Days, but in reverse. So if any Trekkie wants to school me on that one in the comments, I'd be happy to have it told correctly because I hate to get it wrong. I love Tasha Yar. Of course, I'm always going to love the blonde. It's my favorite, but um, that was interesting when they killed her. Like, why would you want to leave Star Trek ever as an actor? Never got that series. It's funny, Jerry Garcia, G or Jose, Jerry Garcia. Jerry Garcia drew a comic book for DC. Jerry Conway and Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Um, he's one of the artists that I definitely, cause he, my real introduction to him, aside from all the, you know, seeing all the stuff that he did for 
peripherally because I wasn't much of a DC person. But when he took over on the Titans new series after Perez left, Perez left, I hated it because it wasn't Perez. And now I look at it and it's just so gorgeous and so beautiful. And he's such an amazing artist and I really love his art. So that is that. Beverly Crusher just walking around. I got my lab coat on so you know I'm a scientist and a doctor because I'm a doctor. <laughs> Worf. This must have been so much fun to draw with all these. These are great likenesses. I mean, that looks just like uh, Crosby. Cosby. Crosby. It looks just like Bill Cosby. <laughs> Tasha Yar. I always thought she was so beautiful. Uh-oh. Aren't they the ones with the red... Uh, what are they? The Ensign? No. Because then Wesley, Wesley was an ensign, right? I'm just not hip to all the military, you know, like ranking and labels and titles and lieutenant and all that stuff, you know. It's completely lost on me, guys. I can't know everything. Wesley, that's a pretty good likeness. Will Wheaton, he's cool. I love Will Wheaton. LeVar Burton. See, I guess they should have went with him as the host for Jeopardy, eh? Mm -hmm. Although I didn't think he was that exciting. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting. I guess it's too soon. Like, with from Alex Trebek, he'll always be the face, the voice, the, the mustache. A weird thing for me with... Uh, although I feel the same... Like, okay, here's my Alex Trebek, LeVar Burton connection. It's hard for me to... Even though he shaved it years before he passed away... I always saw Alex Trebek's mustache when I looked at his face, just because it's so iconic. And I feel like I always see LeVar Burton's banana clip sunglasses as Jordy because that's how I know him and how I was introduced to him. I guess I don't remember him from reading Rainbow. So anyway, so I, it's hard for me to look at him without the banana clip. That would be awesome. See, that would be so much better. Like if he hosted Jeopardy, with the visor on, you cannot tell me that everybody wouldn't tune in to watch that. Am I right? I'm right. Holy mother of God. Is this a direct adaptation from the show? I don't think so. Because when did Pink He-Man ever appear on an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation? Oh my gosh, I just don't know enough about my Star Trek folklore. Oh, but of Tasha, like, or she, no, she's not Tasha Yar. What is her name again? Anyway, if she took him out immediately, then it must be some sort of joke. Maybe it's a slam on He-Man or something, but I kind of love it. I would love it more. He's holding a gun and I thought that the gun was his arm at first, but he's holding a gun, but that is fantastic. That is like disco He-Man. And we thought He-Man was Disco He-Man, but no, that was. Anyway, once again, for a comic I didn't find particularly exciting when I was younger, even though I have no idea how I couldn't have, although maybe I did. It looks like I read it enough, right? You could tell by the cover. But anyway, totally loving this. Now I totally want to read the rest of this. If you guys are into Star Trek or Star Trek comics, John Byrne art, Legion of Superheroes, inked by Carl Kessel. Um, I think that's who inked it. I know it's definitely John Byrne. But anyway, you definitely need to check this out because it's totally a lot of fun. Actually, that cover looks kind of familiar. Maybe I did get it. Anyway, so cool. Last from the past, Star Trek The Next Generation. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you some more later. All right, thanks, guys.